The Wolves in the Walls, written by Neil Gaiman, illustrated by Dave McKean. Lucy walked around the house. Inside the house, everything was quiet. Her mother was putting homemade jam into pots. Her father was out at his job playing the tuba. Her brother was in the living room playing video games. Lucy heard noises. The noises were coming from inside the walls. They were hustling noises and bustling noises. They were crinkling noises and crackling noises. They were sneaking, creeping, crumpling noises. Lucy knew what kinds of things make noises like that in the walls of big old houses, and she went and told her mother. There are wolves in the walls, Lucy said to her mother. I can hear them. No, said her mother, there are no wolves in the walls. You must be hearing mice, I suppose. Wolves, said Lucy. I'm sure it's not wolves, said her mother. For you know what they say, if the wolves come out of the walls, then it's all over. What's all over? asked Lucy. It, said her mother. Everybody knows that. Lucy picked up her pig puppet doll, which she had since she was a little, little baby. I don't think it sounds like mice, she said to her pig puppet. In the middle of the night, when everything was still, she heard clawing and gnawing, nibbling and squabbling. She could hear the wolves in the walls, plotting their wolfish plots, hatching their wolfish schemes. In the day, Lucy felt eyes upon her, watching her from the cracks and from the holes in the walls. They peeped through the eyes and paintings. She went to walk to her father. There are wolves in the walls, she told him. I don't think there are, Poppet, he told her. You have an overactive imagination. Perhaps the noises you hear come from rats. Sometimes you get rats in big old houses like this. It's wolves, said Lucy. I can feel them in my tummy. And Pig Puppet thinks it's wolves as well. Well, you can tell your puppet, began her father, and then he said, Why am I asking you to tell her anything? She's a puppet. Lucy patted her pig puppet's head so she wouldn't be offended. Anyway, you know what they say about wolves, said her father. If the wolves come out of the walls, it's all over. Who says that? asked Lucy. People. Everybody. You know, said her father. And he went back to practicing his tuba. She was drawing a picture when she heard the noises again, a scrambling, rambling, rustling in the walls. There are wolves in the walls, she told her brother. Bats, he said. You think it's bats, she asked. No, he said. I think you are. And he laughed for a long time at his own joke, although it had not been a particularly good one. I am not bats, said Lucy. I am telling you there are wolves in the walls. Firstly, there are no wolves in this part of the world, he told her. Secondly, wolves don't live in walls, only mice and rats and bats and things. Thirdly, if the wolves come out of the walls, it's all over. Who says? asked Lucy. Mr. Wilson at my school, said her brother. He teaches us about wolves and things. And how does he know? asked Lucy. Everybody knows, said her brother. And he went back to doing his homework. The next day, the noises were louder. We have to do something about those mice, said her mother. Pesky rats, said her father. I'll call someone up about them in the morning. It's bats, I know it is, said her brother happily. I shall ensure that I sleep with my neck exposed tonight in case one of them is a vampire bat. Then, if it bites me, I shall be able to fly and sleep in a coffin and never have to go to school in the daylight again. But Lucy did not think it was mice or rats or bats. She shook her head at this sad display of ignorance. Then she cleaned her teeth, and she kissed her mother and father, and she took herself off to bed. The old house made no noises that night. I don't like it, Lucy told her pig puppet. It's too quiet. But soon enough, she closed her eyes, and she was fast asleep. In the middle of the night, there was a howling and yowling, a bumping and thumping, and... The wolves came out of the walls. Oh no, shouted Lucy's mother. The wolves are coming out of the walls, shouted Lucy's father, picking her up and running down the stairs with her and his best tuba in his arms. It's all over, shouted her brother as he fled down the stairs beside them. The family went out the back door and into the garden. They huddled up at the bottom of the garden that night. The lights were on in every room of their house. 
Back in the house, they knew the wolves were watching their television and eating the food from their family's pantry and dancing wolfish dances up the stairs and down again. We should go and live in the Arctic Circle, said Lucy's father, where the houses are made with walls of ice and snow, and there's nothing but polar bears and seals for hundreds of miles. When the wolves come out of the wolves, there's nothing else you can do. Humph, said Lucy. We must go and live in the Sahara Desert, said her mother, where the walls are colored tent silks that flap in the hot wind, and there's nothing but camels and desert foxes for thousands of miles. Bleh, said Lucy. I think we should go and live in outer space, said her brother. We could live in an orbiting space station, with metal walls with lights on them that blink and flash, and nothing but foozles and squassocks for billions of miles. What are foozles and squassocks? asked Lucy. Outer space things, he told her. They have lots of legs, except for the squassocks, who don't have any legs at all, but they are friendly enough. I don't want to live anywhere that isn't my house, said Lucy, and I left my pig puppet behind. We can get you a new one wherever we're going, said her brother. Now let's try to go to sleep. It was chilly at the bottom of the garden, and Lucy missed her pig puppet. She'll be all alone in that house with the wolves, she thought. They could do dreadful things to her. So Lucy crept back up the garden, quieter than any mouse, and she slipped up the back steps, and through the back door, and into the house. Lucy was standing there, in the little hall at the back of the house, when she heard some wolves coming down the stairs. They had been eating jam and toast in front of the television, and were coming back for more. Where could she go? What could she do? Quick as the flick of the wing of a bat, Lucy slipped into the wall. She crept through the house on the inside through the downstairs, up the middle, and into the wall of her bedroom. There was a huge wolf, fat as anything, asleep on her bed. He was wearing her socks, two on his back paws, one on his ear, and one on the tip of his tail. He was snoring very loudly. Lucy pushed open the picture that had hung over the bed, and she climbed down, carefully, quietly, and she picked up her pig puppet from the floor and gave her a hug. Snorkel snurk snored the wolf fast asleep. Quiet as a shadow, Lucy climbed up to the top of her old dollhouse, and from there to the top of the chest of drawers, and from there to the mantelpiece, and behind the picture, and back into the walls. It's kind of nice in the walls, she thought. I was worried sick about you, she told her pig puppet, and she squeezed her very tightly. Through the walls crept Lucy, and back into the garden. Where have you been? they asked her. I had to go and get my pig puppet, she told them. I told you I would have bought you a new one, said her mother. One that was pink and new and not going gray. That was why I went back to get my pig puppet, said Lucy. And she went back to sleep, cuddling her pig. The next morning, Lucy's mother went to work and Lucy's brother went to school. And Lucy and her father sat down at the bottom of the garden. He practiced his tuba and read travel brochures. We could go and live on a desert island, her father told them, all that evening, over a dinner of hamburgers and french fries and little apple pies with astonishingly hot middles, which Lucy's mother had brought for them when she got back from work. We could live in a grass hut with grass walls on an island in the middle of the sea, with nothing but goats on the island and nothing but fishes in the sea. We could live in a hot air balloon, said her brother. We could live in a tree house at the top of a very tall tree, said her brother. Or we could go back and live in our house again, said Lucy. What, said her father. What, said her mother. What, said her brother. Well, said Lucy, there's a lot of space in the walls of the house. And at least it isn't cold there. What about the wolves, asked her father. They're in the house, said Lucy, not in the walls. Lucy's mother and father and brother grumbled and frowned. Still, none of them wanted to spend another night sleeping at the bottom of the garden. They tried sleeping in the shed, but it smelled too much of lawnmowers and of the fertilizer used for the rhubarb. So they crept up the back steps, through the back door, into the back hall, and into the walls. We must be very quiet, said Lucy. But the wolves were making so much noise that no one could have heard them anyway. The family crept through the walls of the house, peeking out through the eye holes of paintings and through the cracks of things. There were wolves watching television and eating popcorn. They had turned the television up as loud as it would go, and they had spilled popcorn all over the floor, where it stuck to the unfinished slices of toast and jam. 
There were wolves dashing up the stairs. There were wolves sliding down the banisters. Some of the wolves had put on the family's nicest clothes, and they had made big holes in the back of them for their tails. The family went to sleep in the walls. In the middle of the night, something woke them up. The wolves were having a party. They were singing and dancing and telling jokes. One of the wolves was playing her brother's video game and was beating all his high scores. Two of the youngest of the pack of wolves had got into the pots of Lucy's mother's homemade jam and were eating it straight from the pot and smearing it onto the walls. The biggest, fattest wolf of all was playing an old wolf melody on Lucy's father's second best tuba. My jam, my walls, said Lucy's mother. My video game high scores, said Lucy's brother. My second best tuba, said Lucy's father. Right? I've had enough, said Lucy. There wasn't much in the space between the walls, just an old broken chair. Lucy picked up a chair leg. You know, I've had just about as much as I can take of those wolves too, said her father, and her mother, and her brother. Each of her family picked up a broken chair leg. Ready, said her mother. Ready, said everybody else. And... Arg! howled the wolves. The people have come out of the walls. And when the people come out of the walls, shouted the biggest, fattest wolf, flinging aside the tuba, it's all over. Round and round they ran, gathering up their most treasured possessions. Flee, they shouted. Flee, flee, flee. For once the people come out of the walls, it's all over. Down the stairs went the wolves, scurrying and hurrying and tumbling over each other in their hurry to get out of the house and get away. Whose idea was this anyway? moaned one of the wolves. And the wolves ran, and they ran, and they ran, and they ran, and they didn't stop running until they got somewhere where there would never be any people in the walls who would come out in the middle of the night whooping and singing people songs and brandishing chair legs. And whether they went to the Arctic or to the desert or outer space or somewhere else entirely, nobody knows. But from that day to this, these wolves have never again been seen. It took the family several days of cleaning up to make the house look anything like it did before the wolves came out of the walls. But eventually, everything was back to the way it had been before, except for Lucy's father's second best tuba, which had sustained severe jam damage. So Lucy's father sold his second best tuba and bought a sousaphone instead, which he had always wanted, and everything went back to normal. Until Lucy noticed something funny. She heard rustlings and scratchings and squeezings and creakings in the old house. And then, one night, she heard a noise that sounded exactly like an elephant trying not to sneeze. She went and got her pig puppet. Do you think I should tell the rest of them, she said, that we have elephants living in the walls of our house? I'm sure they'll find out soon enough.